Hello, everyone. I wanted to make this to help establish the word on Ezekiel's vision because Ezekiel did have an amazing vision. He definitely saw the return of Jesus Christ, and he sees him returning when he sees the whirlwind. He sees Jesus returning with the wrath of God, and that's what he sees. And the whirlwind is the chariots. And it is also the cloud that Jesus will return in. That's amazing, church, I tell you. And we see that uh, Ezekiel also sees the living creatures, which they are the sons of God. He sees the faces of the four beasts. And the four beasts are the lion, the oxen, which Ezekiel says the calf, but they're the same in Revelations 4 and 7. He sees the man and the eagle, which they are the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew sees Christ as the king, the lion. Mark sees Christ as the oxen, a servant, a beast of burden. He sees him as a minister. Whoo, glory. Mm, that's good stuff right there. It is. Then Luke sees him as the man, the humanity of the Son of Man. That even though he came for a reason to die on the cross and to give his life, he also showed us his humanity, that he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he had compassion on so many. And we've seen him minister because that's what Jesus also came to do, to be a minister, a servant of God. And that's why Ezekiel is seeing his humanity. Ooh, that's amazing, ain't it, church? And we see that Ezekiel sees the eagle, which is the book of John. He sees the deity of Jesus as God. He sees the eagle represents the spirit of God. And Christ is the Word of God. And the Word of God was with God, John 1 and 1, and the Word was God. John 1 and 14, the Word became flesh. So see, they, these four Gospels is what Ezekiel is seeing. And John also sees those four Gospels in the book of Revelation, chapter 4 and verse 7, because he sees those four beasts. And those four beasts are the four Gospels of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel sees the living creatures, which are the sons of God. And he sees them running as flashes of lightning, which we know when Jesus returns out of the east, it will be as lightning, as flashes of lightning. Ain't that amazing, church? I tell you what, it don't get no better than this, I tell you. Ezekiel 1 and 22, he sees the likeness of the ferment. That is upon the heads of the living creatures as the color of terrible crystal stretched above their heads. Now Genesis 1 says that ferment is heaven. So he sees heaven above the heads of the living creatures. So what he is seeing is the sky. Because First Kings 7, chapter 7 and verse 23 talks about a molten sea that is upon the heads of the 12 oxen. And if you see those oxen, you'll see that three are in the north, three are in the south, three are in the east, three are in the west. That's in Revelation 21. That's, the, that's in a, a Revelation 21 and 11. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel on the gates. Three are on the east. Read that. You'll see. I'm telling you, church, this amazing word right here. And that's what Ezekiel is seeing. He is seeing the sea, uh, the crystal that is above their heads, which is the sky. Because Job chapter 37 and verse 18 said, The sky which is strong as a molten looking glass. Revelations chapter uh, 15 and verse 2, we see that when they've all won victory and this is all, they're about to come to this earth, we see that, that they are standing on the sea of glass because it's on fire. And the reason why it's on fire is because God is destroying that gulf. That gulf that separated heaven from earth. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! 
And we see that even the apostle in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 says we see through a glass darkly. Luke 16 and 25, we see that the gulf is what separated those from those in hell. And that gulf will be removed. Ezekiel also hears the noise of the noise of a host, a noise of great waters. He is seeing all of those that are returning with Jesus Christ because he sees a multitude of people and nations and tongues. And we know the waters are people because Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12 and 13 and Revelations chapter 17 and 15 establishes that word with us that waters are indeed people, nations, and tongues. Now Ezekiel 43 and verse 2, he says that he sees the glory of God came from the east. And he says his voice was like a noise of many waters because there are many people with him. Now Ezekiel at the end of Ezekiel 1 and 26 and 28, Ezekiel is seeing the appearance of the throne of the sapphire stone. Because it is the throne of the Nazarene, glory, hallelujah, Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 7. The Nazarene's polishing was of sapphire stone. Whoo, that's revelation, church. That's revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 23, we see Jesus is the Nazarene. Now Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 28, he sees the rainbow above the throne of Jesus Christ. Because Revelations chapter 4 and verse 3 establishes that word with us. Revelations chapter 10 and verse 1, when Jesus returns, the rainbow is with him. We see in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 16, that rainbow is the everlasting covenant of God. That when Jesus comes down, he's coming down with that covenant for those that are here in the thousand year reign. He's letting those people know that I still will keep my covenant. Woo, glory. I will keep my covenant with those on the earth that I promised you that when you see that rainbow in the sky, you know that I will not flood the earth. That is the everlasting covenant that God will keep throughout all generations. I hope and pray that I was able to establish this word with you. I pray that you were blessed by this revelation. And I am blessed by each and every one of you. Oh, today my heart was just lifted up by the kindness and the love and the compassion and the forgiveness of my dear precious friends that I thank God for every day. Am I blessed? Yes, I am. Because God blessed me with you. Thank you. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you. And I thank you so much for standing together with me through my good times and through my bad times, church. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Because we stand together in love and in the love of God in Jesus Christ. That we love one another and have compassion for one another. That truly, my friends, is the love of God. And I saw the love of God today in my friends. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Glory to His holy name. I lift up all praise and all glory in His holy name. And I thank Him for when I do stumble. I thank Him for His Holy Spirit that picks me up, brushes me off, and lets me know I can do it. 
I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen, church? Because he said so. And I thank each and every one of you too. I love you, my dear precious friends. I love each and every one of you. God bless you.